Uh, welcome to the Simple Driver Development Masterclass Series. I warmly welcome to the session. Uh, thanks for coming and thank you for your time. And today is day nine. And today's topic is about uh, how to write a driver file for STM32F411. Okay. So we are going to uh, start the header file today. So first we are going to understand what is device specific header file and how to write it from scratch. Okay. And we'll be updating the details of bus domain the base address of bus domain, the base address of peripheral addresses in the header files okay? so, and also the register details. So everything will be updated in this device, device driver file. So we are going to start from scratch. So uh, uh, in today, like we'll be completing uh, how to uh, write a header file for the bus domain and the peripheral, uh, like uh, the bus, uh, the base address of the bus domain as well as for peripheral address. Okay. So, so far we have learned uh, like uh, seven, eight days, like uh, how to choose the right processor on the day one and day two, uh, we have covered up software design flow, like what is compiler, what is linker, assembler, and uh, how how IDE works. And third day, like we have covered how to install the IDE and how to create a simple project, okay. And day four, we have gone through the debugging process, like how to debug uh, like how to do embedded debugging, like what, what is software serial viewer and what are all the embedded debugging options. So that we caught up on day four and day five we have caught up what is memory map and uh, how it, uh, like how to use memory map for the MCU for blinking in LED. Okay. We have created a project for LED blinking and we have used memory map to blink the LED. And uh, like day six, uh, like day seven, it's about vector table. Uh, like how to use vector table and for interrupts how to write program how interrupt works on microcontroller and day eight is about uh, gpios we have caught up general purpose in what is gpio and how gpio works how to configure its input and output what is open drain and what is push pull and we have also gone through the several registers of gpio okay so this is the uh, so these are the things which we have learned so far so today is how to write a specific header file okay so before that, uh, I'll give you an announcement. The attendance link will be available only for 15 minutes. So you have to present it on uh, to be on live for submitting the attendance form. Okay. So it, even if it is there in the description, it will be closed within 15 minutes of time. Okay. So so videos will be removed from YouTube after three days. So you have to go through the videos within three days. Okay. So some sessions will be using the recorded video streaming, especially if it's a lab sessions or if I'm not able to present it online. And PPT and source codes is available only for the paid participants. Okay? So no classes on Saturdays and Sundays. So you should have an attendance of minimum of 25 days to get a free certificate. So these are the announcements. And hackathon session we have this Sunday for 2.30 hours, for which is designing the schematics for 81 board design. Please do join the hackathon on this Sunday. So today, let's start the day with the mindset lesson. So today mindset lesson is about learn, unlearn, and relearn. Okay, so you have to sometimes your own experience may maybe may become a problem. So in that case, you have to unlearn what you have learned and you have to relearn back again. Okay. So this is the lesson which I like to share you today. Uh, so learn, unlearn, and relearn. Let's go for the session. So, so today's session is about the GPIO driver development for you. So when you, whenever you create a project, you have an application here and you should need a drivers. Like whenever you create a complex project, when it has multiple peripherals involved in that, then you need a driver layer, which will have a C file and header file for each and every peripheral. For example, for GPIO driver, you'll have GPIO driver.c and .h, which will have a lot of functions where you can call these functions on this application programming. So that you could reuse these functions on for different applications. So once you write the driver file, then you can use it for any kind of application you want to develop. So, so it's a one-time process. Most of the time, the driver file will be provided by the manufacturer itself. Okay. If if the manufacturer uh, didn't provide the driver file, you can also write the driver file on your own. So you so GPA will so in this course like we are going to develop gpio driver.c and gpio driver.h 
especially for STM32F411 RE and I2C driver.c and I2C driver.h and UART driver.c, UART underscore driver.h and SPY underscore driver.c and SPY underscore driver.h. Okay. So we will be familiar on uh, how GPIO works and how the SPY protocol works and how the UART works and I2C, how I2C works. Okay. So this will be, you also have a device header file, stm32f411xx.c. Sorry, it is not c.h, it is only h. Okay, there's a mistake here, it is only h. So this device header file uh, will have the details, will have the base address, will have the definitions of the registers. Everything will be stored here and this file will be, will be used on this driver file as well as on the application file. It will be used on both places. So this driver layers will be connected to the GPIO or I2C or SPY or UART. Okay. So in this program, we are going to develop uh, the drivers for uh, GPIO driver.c. So you, you need to define the bus. You need to define the memories uh, on the header on this header file on the device header file. You have to define the memories like what is the starting address of flash memory. What is the starting address of SRAM and what is the starting address of ROM, which you get from the data sheet details, and you have to write the code on this. Okay. So, so what is a device specific header file? Okay, what is this file? STM32F411. Most probably, mostly this this device file will be provided by the manufacturer itself, but still you can write it on your own. So when you strike this program from scratch, like you understand the microcontroller better, so that even if you don't find out any header files. You can write it on your own by going through the data sheets. The purpose of this course is to write the program file by going through the data sheets. Okay. Instead of downloading the uh, instead of downloading the header file from the manufacturer website or from the or from any other sources available on the internet, it is to write the program from scratch. So this C header file contains uh, the microcontroller specific details. Okay, so so if you have some other microcontrollers, then it should be STM32 F407 or four, whatever the number may be. Okay, so it is device specific. So it will have this header file will have the base addresses of various memories present in the microcontroller, like memories like flash memory, SRAM memory, ROM memory, SRAM2 and etc. Okay, timer control. Uh, so everything it will be there okay so the base address of various bus domains like AHB bus for advanced high peripheral bus and the peripheral bus advanced peripheral bus domain okay it will have the base addresses of various bus domains it also has the base addresses of various peripherals present in different bus domains okay and it also contains the clock management macros Okay, it is clock enable and disable macros. Okay, and you have uh, it also has IRQ definitions, uh, peripheral register definition and peripheral register definition, and other microcontroller configuration macros. So all this will be all this uh, information will be found on the header file. So we are going to write this header file today from scratch. Okay, we are going to cover up the memory part and the AHP part and APB part. So the rest of the part like will be covering up once we going through the course. So this device header file will be used, this STM32F411XX.h will be used by the application as well as by the driver files. Okay, the driver files like GPO driver.c and GPO driver.h are like i2c.c and i2c.h. Okay, spy.c, spy.h. So it all it can also be used by the driver files. Okay. So let's go for uh, the coding part. So I'm going to open uh, STM32 Q by D. Okay. So before that, I will create a folder called uh, on my desktop. I just create a folder called day nine. Okay, I just create a folder called day name. New folder. Okay. Otherwise, I'll just create I, this. I'm going to keep this common. So rename. So this will be used. Uh, 
this this will be used for for the further classes so i'm going to create this folder rename this is demo so demo underscore driver okay so i create a folder called new folder called target Okay, just copy this path. I just open STM32 Q by D. Okay, paste this path, click launch. So this will create the project fold project folder. Like this is initializing the okay, is initializing this STM32 body. Go for file, go for new, create STM32 project. Okay. so you have to choose the board so we are using click board selector okay we are using nucleo f411 re okay choose this board click next and give a name for the project okay i will i'll just rename this demo one okay demo one uh, so i'll also give a name like underscore day nine okay choose this option as targeted project type option is empty and click finish okay so once you create this project you will have the startup file here okay we have caught up the startup file on the vector table on the on or like it contains the information uh, like there all the handlers and interrupt handlers will be available on the sort of file like it but if you have any data on the flash memory it copies the data from the flash memory and it loads on the ram okay so so it, this startup file can be in c code or assembly code but the default which was generated from stm32 q by d will be on asm okay so they use asm language uh for uh for this startup code okay they also have dummy implementation for all this irq handler so if, if you want to implement interrupts for all this uh handler you could write your own functions we have caught up that this on day on day seven okay so you have source file so all the source files will be stored here okay so all the store all the source files will be all the source files will be stored here and we have include files inc folder which which can which can have uh the header files all the header files will be stored here so in order to write the driver file like i choose this project right click go for uh new i create a folder okay i create a folder so uh, the folder name i'll give it as um, driver okay click finish okay inside this folder i'm going to create new folder again uh, which is inc okay click finish Okay, I'm going to right click new folder again and I'm going to create the source file here SRC. Okay, finish. So we are going to have INC and source like uh, all the dri GPIO driver.c will be here, a driver file. Okay, 
and INC will have the header files. Okay. So let us uh, let us create a header file here. Like I just go for this INC folder. I click new. I just create a file. Okay, new file. Just give me more. Right, right click, go for new. Now options to create the header file. New file from template. Sorry. So you have you I just choose this folder here new INC folder go for file go for new I have options to create a header file here okay so I just train STM thirty two okay F four eleven uh, XX dot H okay so default C header template I choose this is default C header template click finish so these are all the include gods okay. Uh, so we have uh, uh, we have created the header file on this folder. If you check out the uh, save, uh, let, let me save this file. Okay, it's stored here, but it should be here on the driver. File. It should be on this include folder. Okay, it should be on this include folder. So we have we have created stm 32 f 411 xx dot h and uh, this is main dot h okay so I just rename this and uh, I just type hash include okay so whenever it is a user defined header file you have to use double quote. So right click and build the project. Okay. So we are getting an error called no such files or directory. Okay. We are getting an error called no such files or directory. Okay. So, uh, so we have uh, like uh, that is it, it, it. We are getting a fatal error called no such files or directory. In order to overcome this error, you just go for right click, go for properties, okay, C C plus plus build check. Go for settings, okay, and go for this MCU GCC compiler. You choose this MCU GCC compiler and you click uh, the include path okay and you click add like you come for the workspace okay and this is the this is the path click okay click okay okay apply and close and right click Build the project again. Okay. STM thirty two F Okay. So uh, I save this project again. So file file save. Let me recheck again. I click go for properties, uh, include path. Let me copy this path like uh, the file system path. I just go for uh, desktop, this demo. Demo underscore driver. Okay. 
select folder click ok click apply and close click yes i click build the project again okay so the error has been uh, error has been solved so you have to do this you will also get the same error it means now the file has been linked linked to this uh, has been linked to this project folder so i just repeat once you create this header file okay so you have to write the coding in between here okay this use a different header file use a different header file you have to include here you you you, you have to include um, you, you you have to include it on the, you have to include on the settings right click go for properties i just repeat right click go for properties okay in here like mcu settings just go for uh, c c++ build settings mcu gcc compiler go for include paths and choose the file system path not the workspace path the workspace path is not working choose the file system path and you have to give the path for where the header file is located and give apply and close you you have to do the same thing also for the source file whenever you want whenever you need to increase the source file we will do it as we proceed in the program but as of now as of now like uh you you create the header file and you include it to the project file okay so now open the data sheets uh, i just go for the data sheet okay uh data sheet and i just open the reference manual so I also open the data sheet also. Okay. So I have opened the reference manual and the data sheet. You just open the data sheet. Click go for memory mapping. Okay. So this will give you the addresses of the boundary addresses of the processor. Okay. So you have uh, the bus memory map will have the bus address okay so these are the boundary app2 these are all the boundary address okay. so let me open the reference manual uh, click i just go for the memory embedded flash memory interface okay so you can get the memory details here so this is the main memory the main memory starts from this location the flash memory starts from this location okay the system memory that's rom starts from this location okay otp area starts from this location so you have to define this memory on the uh you have to define this memory on the header file first so let's define the memory okay so let's uh let's define this memory so i just open here you have to define like uh, before that, let me zoom this appearance, like show view. Okay, so I have zoomed this. So let me write the program for hash define, hash, hash define, hash define, uh, flash. This is base address, okay. Base address 0x8. Sorry. So, so this address you have to take from the data sheet. Okay. So sorry. U stand U stands for unsigned. Okay. So here it is. It starts from here. Okay, it starts from here. Okay, this is flash underscore base address. Try to keep it in capital letter as for coding conventions. If you want, you could also use small, but as per the coding convention style, it's better to use the uh, capital letter for the names. Okay, SRAM, SRAM one underscore base address. Okay, so SRAM one base address is can check the base address of the SRAM from you click this okay so 
So you can get the SRAM one and SRAM two. Okay, you can get the base address of SRAM one and SRAM two. This is SRAM one address starts from here, and SRAM two starts from starts from here. Okay. So flash memory address is here. Okay, and system memory. System memory is nothing but a ROM, read only memory. Okay, uh, it is on page number fifty-eight. You have to take this information from page number 58. So uh, you can use the same thing uh, like uh, you can. Sorry. Okay. So I'm going to use the same address here. just for understanding later i can give it like this okay this is for sram1 you should also define for sram2 okay and you should also define for uh, the read only memory okay that's the system memory So SRAM is this SRAM on base address. Okay. SRAM on base address. So you could keep it, you could arrange it in the same line. And SRAM2 base address is 0x2002. Okay. This value you can get from the data sheet. This one two zero zero one C double zero. Okay, two zero zero one that is SRAM two. It is not two triple two double zero one. Okay, two double zero one. It is not two double zero one, two double zero one C double zero. Okay, and the ROM base address is one F of one triple of four zero. Okay, zero X one triple of and four zeros u u stands for unsigned okay so we have defined the memory here play flash memory sram memory sram2 rom and sram okay let's right click build the project okay i'll say this file attempted to be Okay. Attempt to begin rule source does not match the autoscope rule. Okay. Control C. It closes. Okay. Don't say. Let me close this driver file. Click this. Control S. Okay. Right click, build the project. Okay. The project has been compiled now. Build is showing zero errors. Okay. So we have completed the uh, memory address, like uh, base address for memories, like flash memory, SRAM memory, and ROM and SRAM. So the next thing is. Uh, we need to uh, define the bus okay so for that you just go to the data sheet or like go for the reference manual data sheet click memory map okay so uh, you just come for this uh, memory map click memory map so from this you get you will get the bus locations like the peripheral bus location starts from uh, 04 uh, 
uh, like it starts from zero four, okay, zero four triple zero double zero double zero. Okay, so that APP one, APP one starts from, and uh, APP one we have APP one, APP two, uh, we have the EHP one, as well as EHP two, okay, and EH uh, EHP three. So we have three uh, in this in this microcontroller like we have three bus uh, like EHP three, EHP two and uh, EHP one and APP APP one and APP two. Okay, APP one and APP two. So. So let's let's define the uh, let's define for the bus. Okay. So I just go for hash hash define okay. APP one. APP one this peripheral peripheral perif underscore base. Okay. So zero x four like zero x four triple zero double zero double zero u. Okay. So this is so this is the perif base. I just copy this. Yeah, we have app one, app two, and we have ahp one, ahp two, ahp three. Okay. This is ahb one. AHB, AHB3, AHB2, and AHB1. This is APP2. Okay. So you could get this from the data uh, from you can get it from the data sheets. Just click uh, memory map here. Click memory map. So you can get the location of this buses from APP1 starts from like APP. Uh, APP one starts from four zero zero to four zero. Okay, that's APP one. So APP two starts from this location. Okay, this is uh, this is APP two. Okay, and uh, APP two. This is AHB one. AHB one starts from here. So I just copy AHB. AHB one okay. and AHB two. Okay, this is AHB two. And this is AHP three. Okay. So U stands for unsigned. So this is the uh, peripheral base address for AHB one and APP two. Uh, I just right click, build the project, save the project, and build the project. Okay, so there is no error here. Now let's create for the. We have defined the base address for APP one and APP two. So you have, now let's create for GPIO base address. So uh, before this, once we create this peripheral address, okay. So let's open the data sheet, and you have to cross check, like uh, what are all the. Uh, you have to cross check, like what are all the peripherals which is attached to this. For this, you have to go through the data sheet. Data sheet. 
I think it's page number 15, that functional block diagram. Okay. So AHP1. Okay. AHP1. So GPIO. So these are uh, GPIO port A, port B, port C, port T, port E, port H. We have till port H. Everything is tied up with AHP1. Okay. Whereas APP2, uh, we have U.S.1, U.S.6. All these are timers. Okay. EXCIT. Uh, SDIO and M1, so all these are tied up with APP2. So we have to create uh, the registers for all these things for APP2. And for APP1, like we have user 2, okay, user 2. So there is no UART, like I think it is only USART. Some microcontrollers will have both UART and USART. So you, whenever you have USART, like you can also have synchronized clock. Okay. So these are all connected to APP1. Okay. These are all connected to APP1, AHP1. And this is AHP2. Okay. AHP2. This is connected to USB OTG is connected to AHP2. So APP1 is there and APP2 is there. Let's check for. AHB3, AHB3, okay. AHB2 is there. B1, B2. okay so uh, now let's uh, now let's uh, connect let let us start with this ahb bus matrix so ahb bus matrix ahb1 uh, from if, when we start ahb1 like ahb1 has all the gpio ports as well as dma1 and dma2 okay DMA1 and DMA2 is also connected to AHB1. You could see this lines here. So let us configure GPIO port A, port C, port D, port E, port H. A, B, C, D, E, H. Okay. Let's do that first. And then we can go for the, uh, the other thing. So I just click memory map. Could see EHB, EHB1, EHB2, EHB1, and EHB2. So EHB3 is not there. Okay, EHB3, EHB1, EHB2, EHB3 is not perfect. APP1 and APP2. Uh, so from here, like EHB3, this is not required. Okay. Uh, now let's. Uh, Let's let's build the GPIO. So uh, GPIO, uh, as per the data sheet, GPIO is connected to uh, GPIO is connected to A AHB one. Okay. Click memory map. So GPIO is connected to A. Uh, sorry, it is connected to. AH, AHB1, okay, AHB1. The AHB1 starting location is port 0, 0, 0. okay, so that's a starting location, okay. So let's write the program for this GPIOA. So I just copy this, okay, hash define, hash def GPIOA underscore base address. underscore base address okay so this you could mention this as it is ahb1 uh, like it is ahb1 okay so you can also use this ahb1 peripheral base okay plus 0x there is no offset the offset is 0x 
like then you could also mention you just copy this mention as okay i'll just copy so you could mention this as b uh this is b okay so just go for b c d e f g h i okay so b this is c and this is d and this is e this is f up at this g h i okay g this is h and this is i so i have all the base address here now you could add the offset okay so this is this you could mention this is 0x00 okay so you you can mention the so b is Okay, so you can mention this offset. Like this is the offset. Okay. The starting address. Okay. And this is zero eight zero zero. This value you can get from data sheet here, like zero eight zero 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 c zero zero, okay, thousand thousand four hundred thousand eight hundred thousand six hundred and two thousand, okay, till GPI over. So I'm going to do the same thing, like zero eight instead of this I put zero c zero zero, okay, and this I put thousand, here I put thousand four hundred and thousand eight hundred. Okay, thousand three hundred. One C. This is two thousand. Okay, let me cross check once. Ah, uh, thousand three hundred, two thousand, thousand eight hundred, four hundred thousand. Okay, zero C, hundred. Okay, so everything is correct. So we have written the base address GPIO base address. Right click, build the project. To check any error is there. Okay, there is no error. So the next thing is, uh, you could also define the same similar similar similarly. Uh, you could uh, we have declared the GPIO. Okay, for I two C, you can define the base address of I two C U sort. You can define the base address of U sort, base address of U what. Okay, we also have U what. Sorry, U what is tied up with the ABB one. U what U sort. Okay, spy and uh, spy six five everything. If so base address for each and everything like you sort spy three time so these are all the different base address okay uh you could use so what i'm going to do is so if if i want to declare each and everything like it will take a lot of time so i'm going to give this as a homework for you uh like you have to create uh, this for gpio base address for uh gpio we have created the gpio okay similarly you need to create the base address for i2c let me let me show you one example for i2c okay uh i just hash define i2c1 okay i2c1 underscore base address so you have to go for this you have to check for i2c1 check for i2c1 so i2c it will be i2c1 i2c2 i2c3 like that okay you check for i2c i2c1 is here okay 5400 okay so this is the base so it is it is on app1 it is on app1 so uh, you can use the app1 peripheral base okay from from here it was 
zero x five thousand four hundred. Okay, so similarly you you have to do for i two c two, i two c two, i two c three. So this this you can get from the block diagram. Like how many uh, how like how many uh, i two c are there? Like if you check out the block diagram here. Uh, these are all the I2C like C3, C2, C1. Everything is connected to APP1. Okay, there is a, on a, on APP2 there is no I2C. It's only use what is there. Spy is there. There is no I2C on uh, the APP2. Everything is connected to APP1. Uh, C1, C2, C3 is connected to APP1. So, so totally only there is no C4. There is no I2C4. Okay, so we have only C2, C3, and C4. So C3 and C4, the base address or uh, you just go for this manual and uh, we have mentioned the C. C2 is 5800, 5000, 5, 5C, 5C00, 5, 5, okay, uh, 5800, this is 5800 and this is 5C00, okay. So similarly, you have to do for the SPI as well as for the UART and USART. So this I'll give you as a homework homework for today. So I will also do the same thing because you have to define everything one by one, and I'll show you the uh, like I'll show you like what would be like how uh, what are the other things how the final header file look like in the tomorrow class. So before that, you just complete this homework. Okay, uh, for you, you, similar way you you need to declare for the UART as well as for the usart you what usart and spy okay so right click and build project so with this uh with this i close the session so i just repeat like what are the things which we have covered up today so uh, we have like we have create we have gone through this GPIO driver development like how to create this header file so what is what is device specific header file like what are the components will be there like flash SRAM ROM uh, the base address of various domains like AHB and APP and uh, the other peripheral definitions so we have completed the first one and the second one also the third one is going on like the peripherals GPIO we have completed okay so uh, please do uh, please do go through the uh, please do do the assignments okay so complete for the rest for the i2c i'll show you uh, like the uh, we have completed for i2c so use or similarly you have to complete for use what you what and a spy okay i'll share you the code tomorrow this uh, the code what we have done like the the remaining part so this will take time like the only thing you are going to refer only to data sheet Okay, you are going to refer the memory map data sheet and you are going to create the base address. That's all. Okay, so we are we are going to so the, the it is on line number, it is on page number 55. The page the data sheet, the the memory map is on page number 55. Okay. So with this, I close this lecture. Uh thank you so much for your time. Uh see you on the next session tomorrow. Until then, bye bye, take care.